in lecture 3 uh, we will be discussing plasticity and yield criteria the topics that we will be covering are macroscopic plasticity and yield criteria uh, Tresca criteria, one measures condition, effective stress and strain, flow rules, theoretical strength of material and atomistic origin of elastic and plastic behavior so first let's analyze the basic stress strain curve now, stress strain curve is a very fundamental curve in material science and it's a graphical representation of relationship between stress and strain. Now, as you can see that in the elastic region, the graph is linear and the tangent modulus is called the Young's modulus and the area under the elastic portion is known as the modulus of resilience. Now, in this case, the curve has to be for the engineering case since had it been for the true case the curve would have gone up as the as after necking the area would have gone further down now a flow curve is basically a true stress strain curve and uh, it gives the stress required to cause the metal to flow plastically now plastic behavior is very tough to map in terms of equations and the most, one of the most common ways it is done is through power law which is sigma is equal to k epsilon raised to power n so in engineering the transition from elastic behavior to the plastic behavior is called the yield so plasticity describes the deformation of a material undergoing a non-reversible change of shape in response to some applied force so these are some of the points that are important Hooke's law relates stress and strain in elastic region where any stress results in strain in the plastic regime a minimum stress a yield stress must be reached before the deformation can be attained uh, also in the plastic regime equations are obtained assuming certain regimes certain models which are von Mises and Tresca which we will study next so yield criteria uh, now for Finding out the yield criteria for a material, some assumptions that we are making are that there are no Boschinger effects, uh, the volume is constant, and the magnitude of the mean novel stress does not influence yielding. Uh, using these, what we will do is we will keep one of the dimensions constant, and the remaining two dimensions we will use them to plot for the yield criteria. Now, Sigma 1 dash sigma 2 dash sigma 3 dash are called levatoric stresses in this case. And uh, uh, also, since we know that uh, the yield strength is a function of the differences of the principal stresses, that means that the yielding depends upon the size of the Mohr circle, not their position. Uh, with the Tresca criteria, on the right you can see a comparison between Tresca and Von Mises. And if sigma 1 is the maximum normal stress and sigma 3 is the minimum normal stress, which we take as the convention, then we can write that sigma 1 minus sigma 3 is equal to C, and that C value can be obtained from a uni axial tensile test. So that C value is equated to Y. So in this way, we find the Tresca condition. For one misses, uh, on the right, you can see a visual representation of the yield surface. So inside the surface the material will undergo elastic deformation and reaching the surface means the material undergoes plastic deformation. Now for the one misses criteria, the calculations have been shown. Uh, sigma 2 minus sigma 3 square plus as has been shown, the sum of the squares of the differences equals C2. And uh, again in terms of Y and K, uh, Y is equal to root 3 k So these are the comparison between one misses and Tresco. Now, the effective stress for the Tresca case is found out using this, sigma 1 minus sigma 3, while for the von Mises case, it's given in that way. It's important to remember that k is equal to y by root 3 in case of von Mises and k is equal to y by 2 in case of Tresca. Effective strain can be, find, can be found out using these formulas and uh, for the von Mises case, the epsilon can be find, found out using this. Uh, also, it's important that the plastic incompressibility rule uh, means that del V will be zero. So del V by V, which comes out to be epsilon 1 plus epsilon 2 plus epsilon 3, which is the sum of the strains, will always be zero. Now, one which is stress and strain are more applicable to ductile material. In elastic deformation, strain is not part dependent. 
a plastic de deformation strain is. So for that reason we work with incremental strains and we use the epsilon and then sum the author. Thank you.